It is regrettable that those who did not learn noble values of the Imams, peace be upon them, or learn in their great schools of guidance, you would find them commit such heinous crimes with their enemies or against their enemies and sometimes even with those who disagree with them. Acts that humanity finds revolting. So in all honesty, let's re pause our research paper for today and speak about the recent incidents that occurred. As a Muslim fellow, in all honesty, when I woke up in the morning and I read that news, I felt some joy. Which one of us would not feel some joy that the Zionist enemy is held accountable to their crimes, current and past, against this nation and what this nation holds sacred. All of us felt joy. But as time went on, me personally, my emotions changed. My feelings changed. When I saw all these crimes were, that were being commit, committed by Hamas. What is the point? What is the benefit in you ruining what you have done? And your reputation. And the reputation of Islam. And the image of Islam. And instead of gaining the compassion of the world. For the just Palestinian cause. You cause revulsion. I was revolted. Disgusted. By the things I saw. According to what Sharia law or ethics can these be tolerated? This is not the Sharia of Muhammad, peace be upon him and his family. That these things are done to bodies, mutilations. He said, do not mutilate even a dog. These are the ethics of Muhammad and Ali, peace be upon them. The conduct of war in Islam. What happened to those instructions? those rules very ugly scenes took place we don't have an Islam a captive is taken and tortured by the way this does not exist in the seerah the history of the Prophet is not one of his acts a captive is not tortured in Islam let alone a dead person a dead person uh, who died an opponent who died in war. This was the approach of many Sufyan and Hind and Abi Sufyan who mutilated the bodies of the dead, including Hamza, who she ate his liver. But these are the policies or the ethics of the unbelievers and the enemies of humanity. So there is no excuse for these crimes that took place today. A, a rape. to uh, raping women, Israeli women, and depriving them of their clothes. They, they were paraded around and dragged. And some of them even were dead. This is not Islam. These are not the ethics of Muhammad, peace be upon him and his family. A w an elderly woman that was taken, not a, a, a fighter, taken as captive, they enter a home, a man, a woman, and young children in some of one of these settlements, and they open fire, even shooting, killing children, and they film these things and and they shout, "Allah Akbar, God is great." It's really unfortunate. No responsibility, no accountability, no ethics. What for? You started in a way that was considered am amazing. You penetrated the lines of the Israeli enemy. We all felt joy, despite the fact that we ideologically are the opposite, the opponents of Hamas and its sister groups, uh, both according to our belief system and, and politically and so on and so forth. And as the Shia people in Gaza, in Gaza those who converted to Shia Islam, 
Gaza that is ruled by Hamas. They faced such terror and injustice at the hand of Hamas, this savage, brutal group. They went so far to close their places of worship, uh, arrest and put them behind bars and, and, and even kill some. These are reports are widely available and facts are known. Despite the fact that Hamas's funding comes from us or those who claim to be Shia, the, the Iranian regime, the, the leadership of Hamas admitted that yes, our funding, our salaries come from, from Iran, even our logistical and, and expertise, the, the weapons that we have advanced, these missiles and so on and so forth, they come from, they came from Iran and Hezbollah. Despite that, they did not have any loyalty or felt the need to have any respect we, to us and they shed our blood and imprisoned many of us and defiled many of us. There was a video that was spread maybe 10 years ago or more during the early stages of Hamas's uh, dominion over Gaza, how they entered the home of a Palestinian family, a convert family, Shia family. They found their home some books, Shia books. One of them was a book of supplication, Mafatih al-Jinan, in Gaza. They pointed their weapons at them and beat them with their weapons and at the butt of their weapons and they shouted at them, called them names, called them unbelievers. Despite all of that, they did our responsibility uh, and our principles makes us that in these situations, that we ignore our disagreements and differences and feel some need to uh, celebrate if this operation was approached correctly an operation to uh, destroy the arrogance of the Zionist enemy is something we can uh, connect with but unfortunately those who were raised at the hands of Abak and Amr and learned their values of them. They cannot live without destroying, corrupting, and to be brutal, savage, uh, and disgusting. So you, how else would you explain taking a woman and, and, and taking their clothes off like this and dragging them around like that this is not a victory for Islam and Muslims even if she was a soldier even if the claim was she was a soldier this is not Islam the Prophet peace be upon him and his family did not deprive women of the dignity like this and, and take their clothes off like that and beat them up like this and the things we saw something that was disgusting truly Seeing this, I, I could not hold, uh, stop disgust I felt. May Allah never give them success. Or may Allah never give Zidaneus any success. Either of the two groups. It's fortunate. But that is the case. We have principles that we must adhere to. So, some would not say, you only say these things because they are of your opposing sect and uh, this is due to sectarianism no if you look at my statements in the past I've met even those who proclaim to be Shia those who were in the popular relief forces in Iraq I criticized them heavily when they transgressed and, and committed crimes laws must be respected Islamic ethics must be respected humanity must uh, be respected my lectures attest to that fact. I attacked one of the people who, who was acting like Rambo and he was dragged or, and, or hanged a corpse of a Daeshi. So what if it was from Daesh or ISIS? And, and he was filming himself, showing himself as if he was going to cut it up into pieces. And that's what he's going to do to all the other followers of ISIS. We said this is unacceptable because of these acts. Even if they're limited, then they do not represent the popular relief forces of Iraq and as, as a whole. The civilized world was revolted. This is just human nature. You, as a human, 
are revolted by mutilation and similar things so why do these idiotic things you want to resist you want to fight the enemy we are with you however you must adhere to the instructions of the prophet peace be upon him and his family read the book by uh, the grand religious authority Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi uh, policy from the perspective of Islam so there you can learn the policies of the prophet peace be upon him and his family and his conduct in war the conduct of the commander of the faithful Ali uh, in war they would never tolerate these things uh, and these crimes and I swear that the prophet is impacted and hurt by these acts that were committed in his name and the name of his faith even if they were against the enemy just read the history of the Prophet and his seerah you would find that the greatest messenger of Allah the night of our victory in Badr when Muslims were victorious in Badr they held many of the polytheists captive on the next day they found the Prophet peace be upon him and his family his eyes red why? because he could not sleep so asked him the companions asked him why have you not slept why could you not sleep he said peace be upon him because of the cries of the captives this captive this polytheist that yesterday was killing Muslims simply because they were held captive now some were crying during the night the Prophet was hurt by this because he's the prophet of mercy and mercy to the world he could not sleep the night because he held he heard their cries so he encouraged the Muslims to accept the polytheists uh, to pay their own ransoms and to let them to let many of them go this is Muhammad peace be upon him and this is his history That's why he was beloved by Muslim and non-Muslim. Respected by believer and non-believer. Some of the greatest thinkers, non-believers around the world, when they studied the character of the greatest messenger of Allah and his policies and his humanity, they all bowed their heads and testified to his greatness. This is how the Prophet peace be upon him and his family attain the love of the world then you and, and people like you who were graduated from the school of terror by Abu Bakr and Umar and the Umayyads and the Abbasids you want to destroy all of that all that bright pure image of the Prophet with your idiotic acts these are crimes of war and they're not heroics to do these things our prophet could not endure the sounds of the cries of the captives they were polytheists you think he would endure uh, mutilation rape uh, or to treat women in such means and you do that in his name the name of his religion and you say Allah is great while you do these crimes Allah is great in what of these crimes you made the world hate this world the world of Allah Akbar or the expression you go anywhere now in public places or in market in Britain or any other place in the West if you shout out Allah Akbar people will flee thinking that you are a terrorist because that, that term expression has negative connotations it always evokes image, images of, of, of suicide and, and bombing and killing and murder and terror may Allah's damnations be upon this so called Sunni faith it is a curse upon this nation and a curse upon Muslims you have brought us shame 
you made the world hate us. You have a just cause. You're a Palestinian. You are facing injustice. You have been conquered. Your, your faith and what you hold sacred has been defiled. So why must you, must you do such acts that makes the world uh, be revolted with you and not side with you? Would it have been much better if you take these captives? First of all, the civilians must be uh, remained untouched. Yes, even if they are guilty, they're not carrying weapons. The Prophet, peace be upon him, in his instructions, by the way, in war, he said those who drop their weapons are safe. He said if you see a polytheist dropping his weapon, they are safe. Leave them be. Do not kill them. Even if he was, just moment, moments ago, was carrying one. Let alone someone who is sitting peacefully in his home with his family. If you enter his home, just give him a flower. Do not harm them. You would make the world uh, sympathize with you. You see, even the Israelis then would look and pressure their government seeing these things and would say, why are we conquering these people? Why are we harming them? Let us uh, give them back their lands. Anyone who is a civilian, unarmed, are not to be touched. Those who fight you, you fight in turn. Those who carry weapons, if they are held captives, you treat them according to the instructions and laws of Islam. Islam has rules, conduct that must be carried out um, with captives. They're not tortured. Their rights are given to them. You show this bright image to the world that yes, despite the injustice we face, despite the fact that we have been conquered for more than 70 years, despite that, when the enemy's soldiers uh, were held captive, captives by us, we did not deprive them of their rights. We did not torture them. We did not uh, harm them. We did not mutilate their dead. Even the Zionists did not go to those lengths. Not to that extent. Let alone women. Islam sees women as a red line not to be crossed. Truly. There is law that says in our faith that if you have a soldier, a female soldier, Islam instructs you to avoid fighting her unless you have no other option. An elderly man, even if he was a fighter, Islam says, avoid fighting him. Even a young man, not a young, not a woman, not a child, not an elderly, a strong, capable young male. The, the rules are, if you know this young man uh, has a family that depends on him financially, Islam says, avoid fighting and killing this man unless there was no other option these are the principles of Islam great principles someone who's an expert in a certain field a field maybe a doctor maybe a academic or scientist a chemist a physicist or, or uh, any other field Islam says do not touch these people do not kill them unless you had no option so that if they were held captive uh, they can be of benefit when they see especially the mercy of Islam. May al then may Allah guide them. Because of this mercy, many were guided because of these principles and ethics by Muhammad and Ali, peace be upon them. When will you become humans? When will you stop uh, the savage of Abi Bakr and Umar and, and, and repeating them? in these crimes. Yes, Abu Bakr and Umar's policies were brutal and savage, as Abu Bakr did, for example, when he burnt Fuja al salami Yes, it is the approach of Umar. Terror and murder. Nothing is held sac sacred to these people. Abu Bakr wrote a letter to Khalid ibn Walid and Ziyad, and he said to them, kill those who did not pay zakah in every possible way and burn them. 
So they brought these people in, in groups and then burnt them and, and these were the first mass graves. This is the history of Abu Bakr, his bright history, uh, uh, who was behind the first mass graves in Islam. It is truly unfortunate that we find ourselves in this situation and we must remind the nation that they must learn the ethics of Islam again and we have been striving for more than 20 years for that to spread awareness we want this nation to straighten up we don't want to ru uh, ruin all that we have accomplished and we also remind people again there is no victory there can be no success and no treatment for the problems that this nation face no uh, sacred places will be freed if we do not return to the instructions of the Prophet peace be upon him. when he said I leave with you the two weighty things if you were to adhere to them you will not be led astray the book of Allah and my pure family and you will never gain a complete victory even you have temporary victory or short-lived victories here and there true complete victory full victory will not be attained by you and will not be attained except for those who aided Ali and stood with him so that the Prophet's prayer will include him when he said in Ghadir Khum when he raised the hand of Ali said may Allah aid those who aided him or aid him and abandon those who abandoned him you abandoned Ali you betrayed him so you will never attain complete victory And this is really not a victory. Victory in Islam is not that you conquer a military headquarter or you hold some captive or kill a few. But on the other hand, you commit these crimes that are against the principles of your faith, against human uh, humanity and against uh, everything that's good. Things that only lead to... Uh, animosity from the world toward you this is not a victory in fact this is a defeat this is depravity and humans when they look at someone depraved they can only feel revolt or revulsion yes I do not claim that the Zionists aren't also depraved everyone who fights on this earth armies uh, organizations so on and so forth uh, they all have some depravity but whenever s someone is closer to us in thinking we must be more strict and severe against them because now they're taking a risk and they are risking the image of Islam and when a Zionist would, were to do something depraved it will return to his people and it will paint them in a bad a way and uh, show them in a negative image a negative way but when you say you're a Muslim and you proclaim to be a follower of this faith and that your organization an Islamic one that will show us in a bad neg and bad and negative image this nation must go back to the values and principles of Muhammad and Ali peace be upon them and to follow in their footsteps and, uh, and uh, their conduct in war and peace and uh, legitimate uh, uh, policies of Ahl al-Bayt peace be upon them this is when you will witness full victory and a complete victory when we are resisting we must be wise we must have principles we must have noble values that we always adhere to those who committed these crimes must be punished severely and held accountable but they will on the other instead they will be praised 
and reward it. I know Hamas and its leadership. I know how they think. They think these are heroics. These are not heroics. May Allah bring shame upon you for what you have done.